Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode of Ladies in Leadership, um, helping women in all things confidence, motivation, living with resilience, ambition and basically going and getting their best lives. So today I have the pleasure of a very special guest all the way from New York. Her name is Chris Lassiter. So hi Chris. Hello, good morning. Morning, morning to you and afternoon to me. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so um, Chris is a women's life and mastery transformation coach. She has a business called Realign by Design, which I think is really clever, by the way. Uh, <laughs> it's very purposeful. So that's amazing. Uh, she focuses on all things mindset and self-care, which is perfect for today's topic. Mm. I'm going to introduce in a minute. She has a background in clinical psychology and is a licensed counsellor. She works with clients all over the world uh, and she's been in business for many years. So welcome, welcome. Um, it's amazing to have you with us today. Thank you so much. I'm honoured to be here. It's a privilege to be able to be here and share and drop some gems and just make sure that we are spreading women's empowerment all over the world. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the most beautiful thing about connecting with people from different parts of the world, because you get different yes. lifestyles, you get different perspectives, different cultures, different backgrounds. And really, we're, that's what we're about. We're about learning from each other so we can better ourselves, because I'm sure there's things you know that I, I'm not even aware of and vice versa from and our versa. cultural backgrounds, if anything. That's right. So, That's right. so thank, thank you so much for, um, you know, accepting, accepting the invite to be here. OK, so today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, which I'm sure affects lots of women from all walks, um, all backgrounds, all walks of life. And it's called burnout. Burnout mm. is something that anyone can experience. Uh, so, so to myself, simply put, but a burnout is ignoring one's inner true authentic self so it's kind of trying to be something or be somewhere that conflicts with your inner senses of being right. true to yourself um and there's lots of things that come into the whole concept of burnout so what we're going to do is we're going to follow the same uh, sort of pattern that we usually do questions and answers and we're going to both input into that so we're going to start with the first question which is simply what is burnout and can it be avoided Wonderful. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I'm yes. So in the simplest terms, burnout is when we are overextending ourselves. It means that we are, I love to say this, we are pouring from our cup instead of from the overflow. So if everybody can just remember that, that is the easiest way to remember it. If you're, the expression is we cannot pour from an empty cup, right? My thought on it is our cup needs to be full. It needs to be full first before we start pouring outward to anyone. So burnout is what is happening when we are not full body, mind, and spirit, and we are trying to overextend ourselves outward to everyone and everything else without looking at ourselves and taking, you know, doing a lot of self-care and self-reflection. Hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, I totally agree with that because you can't fully be uh, present or available for the people if you want right. self uh, persevering, if you Absolutely. aren't looking after yourself and, and that all important self care that you deal with, like you, you work with clients in your business. Um, and also I, I, I looked at it uh, in a different perspective as well. Like it's often associated with trying to attain something, trying to achieve something and mm -hmm. trying too hard. So it's, it's like um, when people are working so hard, not necessarily working smart and that's yes. why I get this concept of work work smart not work hard not because you can yes. achieve the same or more yes. by following mm -hmm. a different sort of mindset uh, principle of uh, doing things more efficiently which is called working smartly um yes. and burnout is to me being swamped or overwhelmed so but it, yes. it's not just being swamped or overwhelmed one day of the month it's prolonged right. so it's prolonged emotional uh, physical and mental stress which then that's eventually right gets to the mind and the body and i love the fact that you bring in this the soul as well so important yes. uh and then it, it eventually starts to deplete um and like it's like uh self-sacrificing self uh fulfilling prophecy because you don't want right. it the worse it gets and that's that right time thing, yeah mm -hmm. the time thing is really really relevant um so any so what about like in terms of so the other thing i will mention it also can like mm -hmm. in terms of 
it can come from different places but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna i think uh, mention that in the next question but okay. i'm just gonna say a different type of burnout is also uh work related which is purely yes. work related about because a lot of career driven ambitious women listen to this podcast um would be yes. attracted to it uh and there's something called the burnout syndrome which is particularly specifically focused on being burnt out through your job uh, yes. and that is for resulting from chronic workplace stress that's so correct i didn't know that about is absolutely that before. correct I didn't know that and it, yes it. yes because we think of we think of burnout and then a lot of times we're just thinking about familially and yes. socially and things like that but the truth is that it can go it, it goes the gamut it goes across the spectrum it and especially within the workplace when we're not setting healthy boundaries Yes. which can be difficult. You know, it's difficult to speak up for yourself and advocate for yourself and teach other people, even in the workplace, how to, uh, to treat you and how to, you know, have those healthy boundaries be respected and so on. You asked a part of um, part B of the first question was, can anything be done about it? Yes. And so I'd love to speak to that. Yes. yes. The answer, the answer to that, the first thing is that you have to be self-aware. Yeah. You have to be self-aware. That's that's number one, always going to be number one. And being self-aware is just not this woo-woo concept. It means that you literally have to pulse check with yourself. You have to check in and say, how am I doing physically? How am I doing emotionally, mm -hmm. intellectually, mentally? All of those areas are key when you're talking about being self-aware. And you can only check in with yourself. No one else can check in with you as you can check in with you because you're the best you that you can be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the first thing is to be self-aware and that way it leads to number two, which is to set those healthy boundaries. Yeah. Those are the two top things. And both of those can be very, very difficult if you're not accustomed to doing so. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I totally agree. I, I, I mean, I put down here, um, same thing, awareness, education so understanding what it is educating ourselves and then getting the right advice from people like yourself in terms of self-care and then conscious creation about creating yes. a life that, that actually fulfills you and means that you are not going to be continuing to be burnt out because of right. old patterns that you might have been following which are caught leading to exhaustion so thank you so yes. much um yes. so yeah i hope that enlightens people about a little bit more detail into what burnout <laughs> is so um as we progress um the next question is who is most likely or more likely to experience burnout so i know i've got my own personal perspective on this so i'm going to let you share <laughs> first if that's okay chris absolutely well as we know it's our super women these are the, these are the top super women mompreneurs those of us who are highly ambitious you know <laughs> high performing women those are these are those of us who are the most prone to our burnout and a lot of times we're already in the path of burnout before we even react uh, realize it and that's why we are more prone to do it we are accustomed uh to juggling all of the balls in the air and keeping them in the air and keeping them trying to achieve this perfection when that is just you know it's an illusion that per that perfection and that um, that state of trying to constantly just get it right and have no balls fall out of the air, no plates fall that are spinning, and so on. That is all an illusion. So it is difficult though because that's what we're taught. We're taught, you know, to achieve. And for those of us who are high achieving and overachieving, me included, we have to be very mindful of that. We need a formula, something that is very tangible that we can put our hands on to touch and to think about so that we can pulse check to make sure that we are not overextending ourselves and not overwhelmed. I love it. Yeah. All of that resonates with me so much. So nice. Mm -hmm. to, so reassuring to hear that from someone else as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I've got the, uh, very similar things. The high achievers, motivated, yes. very highly motivated, highly ambitious, goal orientated, the go getters, mm -hmm. the doers, as we say, often yes. people in high achieving, high paying, uh, high demanding, high demanding jobs, like you said, the mompreneurs where you're trying to like juggle so many things at the same yes. time. And mm -hmm. it often comes 
comes from that need for perfectionism which you said so yes. where where people think you know 90% isn't enough it has to be 100% when you're doing an activity or a piece of work um, mm -hmm. uh, and and they're killing themselves for that last 10% of perfection which is not really yes. actually necessary i fell victim yes. to that for many years myself yes. um uh, and i've also got here um, something that's personal to me is cultural conditioning. So um, if you come from a family where there are high expectations, your society, yes. um, all, 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 all I want to do with how to achieve. Secondly, is to yes. like fit you in a box in terms of what you need to be, how you need to be, what you need to do. This causes right. so much pressure on a person's mindset because yes. they have to do all of these things. And um, it's, it's not necessarily possible because it, again, mm -hmm. it takes people away from their true authentic self because they're so busy trying to fulfill expectations trying yes. to be a perfect person for other people that's right um and then and then also your immediate family so again in my personal experience it's about subconsciously embedded programs what yes. does it mean to be a high achiever is it necessary to be a high achiever and what does achievement mean so how you associate productivity with your mm -hmm. own identity that's something i suffered from in my own life because i came from a very high achieving family a workaholic father so i yes. associated <laughs> That, that I have to be productive, I have to achieve. If I don't, I'm gonna let my dad down, literally. Right. Um, right. And, and I won't be good enough for him. So I need to right. do so many things for him to just basically accept me, which actually wasn't true, but it's the right. thing that I made up in my own head. And as a result <laughs> of that, I went straight down the burnout route, subconsciously on autopilot until I stopped yeah. and thought, what the hell am I doing? This isn't even me. This is my dad. <laughs> this is, I don't even like I'm reliving my dad through myself, literally. Um, so. So yeah, it's it, it, and that comes from a family where they 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 haven't created a space, a safe space, for for rest, for recuperation, yes. Uh, yes. for what actually slowing down means. And again, from my personal experience, I remember when I was growing up and I used to go to my friends' houses after school at lunchtime and I used to see how, how their families were so relaxed, they'd have their yes. nice and slowly and everything would be at such a slow pace. And I used to think this is so alien to me because I'm used to everything happening boom, 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 boom so quickly. Yes and um so product productive and i thought yes. that was wrong but uh, but it took me a long time to realize that actually what i'm doing is wrong and i need to incorporate more rest because exactly. <laughs> i haven't got the right embedded programs from my childhood which are causing me to to to, to go on this burnout overdrive which isn't yes. even necessary so i was just going to mention that because it's personal to me i don't know if you have a personal story that you'd like oh to i do i do i think we've lived the same life no, really I do. I, I really do. <laughs> Amazing. I think I love we that. the same life. Okay. Oh my God. I come from a very, very extremely high achieving, high performing family yeah. um, of educators. That's it. Okay. There you go. So that was so education was sky high. There was it was a given that you yeah. were going to go all the way through university and keep going and keep going and keep going. Okay. That was the first thing. Second thing is that rest was it was implied laziness. So oh. it was implied laziness. Yeah. So when you rested, you could be doing something else, whatever that other thing else is. Okay. And so I watched and, and both, you know, I came from a very, very hardworking dad. He was a laborer. Okay. So I w saw that and I thought, okay, I see this. He's working hard, these long hours, you know, that is what it's supposed to be. That is what success looks like. My mom, an academic she was um in social services and did all of these human yeah. resource things and all that so that just high performing high achieving constantly burning the uh, candle on both ends and that was my experience as well it was not until i started you know going into clinical psychology i started psychology in high school and once i took high school all the way through you know my master's degree and all the training and all of that i had to do the same thing you did i said wait i <laughs> I realized that I my formula was wrong. I don't know how I, you know, got that wrong, but my formula was wrong. So I had to recalibrate my own formula. Yeah. Person specific yeah. to Chris. What works for Chris? Yeah. Who is and Chris? And I also yeah, and I also not, had to not who's daughter is she, but who is she as a person? Who is she? It's who so is true. she? Not yeah. whose daughter, not whose sister, not whose, you know, uh, auntie, not you know, Anything. who is Chris, the woman? 
And what does that look like? And what does she want? And what does that, how am I measuring success? What is my own barometer? Yeah. That is what did it. And as I started to, you know, evolve, I became very, very, very grateful for the experiences I had and yeah. the opportunity to also recalibrate so that I have new experiences based on what Chris wants. I love that was that. the turning point. <laughs> Amazing. And, and it, I, I, yes. it's so nice to hear your story because you're right. We have very, very similar background. I mean, I yes. remember being young and like my dad used to say, if you if, like, for example, if there was something to do and we said, if somebody said, I'll do it tomorrow, yes. all hell would break loose. Because my dad would say, if you've got something to do, why wait for tomorrow? You have do to it do, now. Today. Exactly. do it now. Yep. You can't even do wait now. five minutes. And like resting was like considered, completely considered laziness. Resting is yes. from the time. Yes. You don't rest in the day. You don't have a nap. You don't relax. You don't chill. These things aren't even part of like life in the day. But yes. um, like, and, and the, the, the crazy thing is my mom, she actually came from the completely opposite type of family. Her family yes. was really in, in a very relaxing, very like holistic, uh, very yes. emotionally aware. And mm -hmm. um, there was this con there was this contradiction. But what my mom did, she actually adopted my dad's patterns. She did bring a lot of peace, yes. serenity yes. to the family. Yes. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but because my dad was the dominant one, um, yes. alpha male, he he mm -hmm. he kind of controlled that. And so my mm -hmm. mom got embedded into her program. So I just saw two individuals who were always busy, and and I, and I honestly think that it's how a person interprets productivity and output. So yes. if you in, what happens in families like that is you start to interpret and you align productivity with success, with achievement, with That's being right. valued, with being enough, all of these things. Yes. So if you if you rest, it makes you feel like you're worthless or you're not worth anything. Because as a yes. child, you associated productivity with being valued, with being seen. That's and right. It, it, unless you've come from a family like that, you don't understand. Um, but mm -hmm. it's really important to, to enlighten people and tell people because different people will see this and hear it from different perspectives to some people it may apply to some people it may not but it's really really good to understand others perspectives as well and I think it's amazing how you and me have a very very similar story so that's great I know we're twin we sisters right? yeah, we are we are we're meant to we're meant to connect so th there's a, co a quote that I actually uh, like that I've seen and, I, and I've seen and I thought I'll just say it and it applies to me and I'm guessing I guess it applies to you it says when you're uh, accustomed to staying busy slowing down can feel triggering for a brain that learned to solve soothe with productivity yes spot on 100 percent yes yes oh i love that i love that that is that's brilliant it's that's brilliantly it's stated spot on. because it so is when, you're, when you're being productive when you're actually like doing like a really complicated challenging task it feels yes. like you're sitting in a sauna it feels yes. sitting to you <laughs> yes and, and to some degree, I still do that. I shift it. So what I do now, I glean my joy from cleaning. Yeah. So if I am, so if it's time for me to vacuum or it's time yeah. for me to say, wash a dish or do those kinds of things or do the laundry, that's when I feel I allow myself those joy you know, to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a matter of consciously like, uh, interrupting the pattern and realizing yes. when you're doing too much. But you're right; it is very, very difficult. I know we're laughing about it, but to detach from it, it's so yes. difficult because your brain's always on overdrive, and you That's know, right. if you feel like your actual brain is killing you, and you're trying to stop your own brain, you're like, "Have a rest, have a rest." But what, the, the discomfort you feel when you have a rest is yes. is is something that just can't even be explained. That's right. Uh, because it's so deeply embedded, it takes a lot of work, uh, yeah. effort, and time to actually detach and rest. And to some people, you th they think, "How can you? How can it be so difficult to rest?" But to a brain, yeah. like I said, that's accustomed to yes. staying busy, it is yes. actually a very difficult thing to do. So, and yeah. you have to set the intention. I had to, <laughs> and and I I had to start with me before I could encourage my clients to do it. Yeah. Uh, many years ago, I said, "Okay, Chris, we are going to set the intention." So the same way that I am encouraging them to set intentions with reaching goals, various goals, yeah. and different things like that. Yeah. A goal for me was to teach myself how to rest. 
same as mine it's exactly the same <laughs> and something i've started to do is looking at things in like mini tasks so once i do one task i take time to actually acknowledge it to celebrate it before yes. i move on to the next task so have yes. space in between each thing that's that right you're doing and take time to honor yourself and do something that's going to make you feel good um uh, so that you've rested in between so you're not constantly on the go 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 and that's you're right. having breaks in between um it's so important and obviously outside of your day-to-day -day life you're doing bigger things where like holidays hobbies right. uh lots of other things that you can do that will come on to later that uh, can can help to relieve that uh, that stress it's right. so important to break it down and break it yes. up and interrupt it so i love yes. it yeah amazing brilliant so that that comes brings us on to our next question which is it's... about the symptoms of burnout um mm it so yes. enlighten us with with things that you you uh, see and know about that okay so i'll approach it from our body mind and spirit soul yeah with our bodies burnout looks like headache fatigue lethargy um changes in appetite changes in sleep changes in weight all of those things it also looks like your temperament it looks like um, what is your mood and how are you able to manage? It looks like your capacity and your capabilities. Are you able to have the bandwidth that you need in order to do your daily, you know, your daily skills, your daily functioning? Do you have the capacity to work and do your regular routines? Are you spread too thinly? Mm. All of those things you're asking yourself. Burnout also looks like a shift in how you approach the world. Mm. So it means your tolerance. How it, is your wick short now? <laughs> because you just don't have, you know, the bandwidth. You just don't have it. You don't have the mental fortitude to be able to problem solve and um, troubleshoot and do all of those kinds of things that you would normally be able to do. Now, here's the twist. For many of us who are accustomed to burnout and burnout is a lifestyle because it is a lifestyle for many people. It's what we know, you know? Mm. We have to do a, lit a different litmus test for that. For that, we have to first go back to that, what we said in question one, which is the awareness. We have to be able to be aware. And that means that you shift. I'm always talking about this formula because everybody has their own formula. You have to shift to your own personal formula and do a pulse check with yourself on, am I doing what is healthy? Not what I'm accustomed to doing, but what is healthy? Because those might be two different things. And other symptoms, when I am, um, I'm big on water intake. So I always look at water, water, water. Are you drinking the proper amount of water for the amount of energy, both mm. mind and body that you are putting forth in the, the course of a 24 hour day? And that includes sleep. Oh yeah. So between, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that includes <laughs> sleep. And I mean, actually sleeping naughty, not lying in the bed and you're tossing, turning, tossing, turning, yeah. you're up, you're looking at the ceiling, you're, you know, having to read, you're listening to meditation, doing all, not that. I mean, actually going into a REM sleep to be able to cycle. Yeah. You know what I find mm -hmm. really good with that? I know what you mean. When your brain's on overdrive, it's difficult to sleep, but that if you tire your body out, so if you do exercise, yes. you like do something really tiring, like a, like a circuits class or high endurance class at the gym, because yes. your body will, is tired, it will make you sleep. So you need to tire your body out in order to have a great sleep. <laughs> that is correct. It's true. It is true. Yeah. And for those of us who are tend to be mind centric, yeah. meaning we ruminate and we're in our heads, problem solving, analyzing, doing all yeah. of that a lot. Yeah. We need the physical outlet. Come whatever on. it is, you can skip rope, you can take a walk, you can do whatever, yeah. walk the stairs, whatever. It doesn't matter to me what it is, but you have to be able to exert enough Release, to yeah. offset what's going on mentally Completely. because otherwise you're going to ruminate and the the mental is going to overshadow the body and keep the body awake yeah 
Yeah, I love that. Yeah, all of what you said re really, really resonates about about sleep and water. Water is something I don't do enough oh. of, but it's something mm -hmm. I'm trying to incorporate in my daily routine. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, all those things, they definitely come about. It's energy depleting yes. burnout is and you feel it yourself. So just yes. as an overview, I, I had like um, physical exhaustion. So you mentioned lots of different elements of physical exhaustion, emotional. So helplessness and sadness, things that you feel in your yes. emotions and then cognitive, which affects your behaviors it can cause irritability withdrawal in your day-to-day -day right. life and loss of motivation yes um and then if it's related specifically to your work it, it can lead to things like exhaustion from your job so yes. um again somebody starts to withdraw which is called depersonalization which is where people start yes. from a distance from their jobs yes. so disconnected disconnected to their jobs That's and right. in it in efficacy which is um they start doubt doubting the, the meaning of their work so so many people are in jobs that they don't like they don't get any passion yes. or purpose from mm -hmm. and they're just doing them on autopilot because obviously the salary exactly. or the paychecks That's there. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I really feel it affects, hugely affects your drive, your energy, um, your habits change. You're more likely to see, uh, seek quick fixes and negative yes. escapisms, develop bad habits because you want to feel good in the moment. Uh, That's right. People do mm -hmm. that and then they become less engaged socially, uh, less interested in society, in people with, and withdrawn. So this is a process which takes a long, long, long time, but eventually that's what happens unless and if you interrupt it find that self-awareness like you said where is it coming from detach right. from the pattern and then recreate based on who you are that for me was detaching completely from the embedded pattern that came from my father uh, mm -hmm. of how yes. life should be and how hard you need to work um right. not creating space healthy space for rest recuperation yes, right. and then mm -hmm. coming back stronger so right. it could be anything for another person you got to identify what it is for you um yes. and and then change that change that and then come at it as who you are when i finally finally like came to my own realizations about myself my own mm -hmm. self awareness my own self love i realized that i'm a person who actually loves to rest <laughs> yes I don't, do Surprise. I don't do it very much i actually really enjoy my downtime i love yes. it and i'm like yeah. i mean like not allowing myself to have as much as i needed don't get me wrong i always made time for it because of mm -hmm. who i am but definitely not enough um yes. and i love downtime so now i take as much as i want need doing things that i love to do and i don't yes. beat myself up if it's the end of the day and i haven't done everything on my to-do list which is right. the old me the old yes. days, 10 years ago, she wouldn't be able to sleep. She'd have to stay up to one at a time to finish every item on her list. And now I'm like, no, it's fine. That can wait till tomorrow or even the end of the week. It's fine. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I would, again, we're you mirroring know, back. We are mirroring back because I used to be that same person. I would have yeah. literally a list, a yes. list yes. that I would check yes. off, you yes. know? Yes. And if I go to bed and the whole list is not checked off, I would just freak out. I would just, yeah. I just couldn't rest. And I would spend so much time staying awake, thinking about, thinking yeah. about it. So, yeah. And, and, not being yeah. and now I'm like, crazy. oh gosh, I'm trying to force myself to go to sleep. Now I'm getting anxiety. I'm upset. I'm doing all that thing. And it just, it, it I had to truly just recalibrate. recalibrate. I had to hit the reset button. I really, really did. Yes. You know, and when I'm, I speak I to, it. you love it. Yeah. When I speak to my friends, when I speak to other people about it, people who I grew up with, who know my patterns, who saw me when I was a kid, yes, tell me to pick it out. They always used to yes. say, "Just relax. Why don't you just take a day off? Just yes. like whatever." Um, yes. And they they say to me now that, "Oh, well, don't don't just focus on the the, the negative. Focus on the positive. Look, look how many great things you have achieved because yes. of your dad's mindset, because of the things that he put. Like I've done so many things that I may not have done if my dad wasn't a workaholic, mm -hmm. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I." I I then went and achieved loads of great things. So now I think, yeah. well, thanks, Dad. Because of you, I, I was motivated. I was ambitious. Not that I'm not like that naturally myself, but yes. I do attribute a lot of that to my dad. So, you know, yes. credit where credit is given. But it's it's about the limit. It goes over the limit. And that's the Correct. limit I try to stop. So yes. you, you appreciate the good and you recognize not what's not working for you as an individual. And that's what you take away. You Absolutely. Minus that from your life. So it's a, it's about creating the balance 
for the yourself. I love and I'm really careful love with using that word because the that there is absolute balance. That is an illusion as well. There's yeah. not an absolute balance in anything that deals with people. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With emotion. Want to dispel that. Yeah. But it is there are person specific balances that we can reach based on taking looking at what dad you know dad's work ethic and then looking at moms and stirring it up and this is my life so I'm looking at my dad's I'm looking at my mom's I'm looking at all that that I processed from being yeah. their child and watching their work ethic and watching their productivity and all of that I take that and then I stir it in the pot with what Chris wants to achieve yeah. and what Chris wants to do what's her, and her best interest. difference yeah, your best mm -hmm. interest, what, what serves your higher self. So that's amazing. And yes. the next question is, is what happens if you don't address burnout? Oh, well, this is a baking <laughs> and a simple answer. You burn out completely. Yes. <laughs> and this is a gentle way of saying, you know, it, it, you, you seriously work yourself to death or mm -hmm. you, you mentally work yourself to death. So you are physically working yourself you're emotionally working yourself and you are tangibly working yourself to death. Burnout, the body is not made to sustain in high cortisol, high fight or flight mm -hmm. for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. And burnout is the result of chronic long stress on the body, the mind and the spirit. That's what burnout is. So when we are in that state for in elongated periods of time, we wind up literally, it, it's like shorting out our system. And once it shorts out, it might come back online, but once we've shorted it out so many times, we short it out permanently, which means it can result in stroke, heart attack, yeah. um, all kinds. I mean, the list is endless mm -hmm. with the physical maladies, mm -hmm. um, even hives, different rashes, different breathing problems, migraines. I can just go on and on and on down the rabbit hole with this one. Is it, and, and that's it's, when it's it becomes daunting. painful it's to talk about it like that in terms of how yes. it affects your health because these things are all true. They do lead Absolutely. to health conditions. Yeah, they do. Yes. And it's frightening to talk about, but it is a reality. And I like yeah. to be very, very candid and very upfront with what it looks like if you don't. So with my clients, they're like, oh, well, you know, I can keep going just a little bit longer. And I said, okay, I understand that you think in your mind that you can, but let's play that out. Let's look at what that looks like six months or a year from now. If yeah. you keep at the pace that you're going yeah. and the rate and the, the frequency and the intensity of what you're doing and in life and how you're navigating your life. Yeah, because when you're young, <laughs> like when you're fresh out of university or, you know, <laughs> you think you're invincible. You think I can do Absolutely. everything, nothing's, not, nothing's too much. And, yes. but you know, at the end of the day, we're human beings, we live in this body. So regardless of what our brain says to us or makes yes. us do, we have a human body, uh, to per, per, to, which helps us to persevere, which, which is our life, which is the length yes. our, of our life and how healthy our life is. We are nothing without our bodies. So That's sometimes amazing. your brain can actually be having a detrimental effect on your body because it's making you do too much. Much. And I love what you said about, um, you know, looking at a time span, because I often with my clients, I use this example of like imagining. So for, for the purpose of the viewers, imagine, imagine a lake and imagine somebody's putting like a plastic bag in that lake every single day. Right. What's going to happen to that lake after five years, 10 years, 15, mm. 20 years? Slowly but surely, it's going to stop functioning. The water is going to stop yes. flowing, and it's going to come to halt. And that that's is right. exactly what's going to happen to your human, the human body, if right. you keep on putting that plastic bag, which is disrupting into your mm. lake, you're going to slow down. And, you know, like, like you said, it's energy depleting, it eventually leads to illness and depression. Yes. So Absolutely. you've got to interrupt it, like we said, um, and in order to change and re, uh, be a better person. So I, I actually looked at it from another perspective, which you, you can add to as mm -hmm. well, is sure. it also that when you do interrupt it, it gives you the opportunity to, like if you reframe it, to recreate yourself, reinvent yourself. So yes. you detach from what isn't working <laughs> from you and you create mm -hmm. a new version of you, which is based on who you are. So that could mean changing careers, 
It could mean yes. starting a business, uh, connecting with your soul in terms of spiritual connection, your divine purpose yes. in life, um, yes. which you brought about. Um, and it could be involved making many other changes, like the size mm -hmm. of your house or go, living in the mm -hmm. countryside. It could, it could, it could be anything that you want that suits you, that works for you. Um, yes. That means that you're less energetically consumed by the way that yes. your lifestyle has been, that has caused you to become burnout. Uh, as a consequence so it's about looking at how much of what am i doing is actually me on autopilot yes um, and then how much is actually what i want to do which is where we, right. we are now That's so right. it, i've got mm -hmm. a, a perspective on first questioning mm -hmm. creating the right questions then detaching and then recreating love it that's your formula yeah <laughs> That is an audio formula. Yeah, I, I wanna. I just thought of it. I'm like, this actually sounds really good. I'm gonna post it soon. Yes. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is wonderful. That is your formula. And the biggest thing is to be be open to becoming self aware and hitting the reset button. Oh yeah. Because again, that's pulling us out of what the expectation is from parents, from authority figures, from, you know, all of the people with, to whom we are we were answering to growing up and poured into us on what productivity looks like mm -hmm. and success looks like, be open to reframing that. The well, moment yeah. that you can are open and you spark the reframing and recalibration of what it means to you, that is the hugest leap you will take towards your own personal success amazing yeah amazing so powerful love it so with that give us some suggestions for uh burnout to prevent it all right first thing we're going to drink water all right i'm like the water police I'm gonna start we're that going today. To... <laughs> literally <laughs> we are going to drink more water that is what we are going to do and 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 i tease about it and say it that way but let me tell you drinking more water is i'm i'm not encouraging that just for the physical benefit. I'm encouraging it because it means that there is an intentionality and a mindfulness. Yeah. So what I'm doing with you is helping you to become mindful about self-care. So my, my tool is drink more water, right? Yeah. But that is one way because what I want to do is to create mindfulness. Mm -hmm. When we create mindfulness about us, body, mind, and spirit, we create mind shift. So that's what the goal is. Mindfulness leads to mind shift. So we're going to drink more water. We're going to become more mindful. We are going to actually do a lot more self-awareness and self-reflection to see if we have the capacity to do all of the things that are being demanded of us and required of us and asked of us throughout the day. So if we are not properly rested, properly hydrated, properly, um, you know, have properly eaten for the day and consumed, we do not have, we, we don't have the gas in the tank to be able to do the things that we need to do for others and ourselves. Yes. So those are three really, really good ones. We're going to drink more water and become more mindful. We are going to do a pulse check and make sure that we are rested. We actually sleep. This is a biggie. <laughs> we actually sleep, achieve sleep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to rest. There's nothing wrong with naps. I'm a big nap person. If I can get one in during the day, I, I plan my naps like I plan my meetings. Amazing. You've got to teach me then. I'm going to, I'm going to be coming to you for that. I need to learn. Please do. I'm oh, really, I really I do, need, and I, I put a do not disturb, and I, it's, I go off camera, I go offline, the phone is off, everything is off for at least one hour every single day. Amazing, sounds so and good, it's yeah. and it's uh, scientifically proven to be beneficial. It's not lazy, uh, yes. like uh, my old brain would think, but it's definitely not lazy. It's actually productive. So it is. I was going yeah. to say it's actually the opposite. It is. It is refueling. So it's, it's yeah. giving, it's pouring back into your, you know, your yeah. gas tank and your cup and all of those things. So we that you we now have We can't fight enough. scientific evidence, can we? Like as, we can have as many opinions as we want, but scientific evidence, that's proof in the pudding. Correct. Got to follow. <laughs> so yeah, amazing. So just to add to your, your answers, it, for me, it's creating new idealisms in life. So mm. be proactive rather than reactive. So that will take yes. that's breaking it, getting proactive yes. about what it actually means to take breaks, to have a rest, 
uh, so creating a safe space for rest yes. under, and under that a mental understanding that is just as productive when you rest and recuperate because it means you come back stronger and you actually have more to offer to those that you work with those that yes. you're around it's actually That's very, right. very um it, it's it's actually very very powerful and it's useful mm -hmm. So it's yes. a good thing to do. Create um, personal boundaries. So know thyself, as we say, with self awareness. <laughs> Create those boundaries with family, friends, work, anything that's demanding your energy, your time, right? Yes. Um, and may, I love what you said about being mindful, taking time for mindfulness. So actually creating time for that calmness, which could be yoga, uh, yes. yoga exercises, breathing exercises. Uh, for me, taking time away from technology, uh, spirituality also spending time in nature the yes. that that help, helps my brain to refocus and switch i just feel so connected to nature and right. um, uh, i just absolutely love it. it helps you to rest uh so do something that you love which for me is cycling yes. or walking but for somebody else it could be something else uh, i have a lot of friends who run and stuff and 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 that that time in nature there's a reason you know we we come from nature we we are connected to it already we just need yes. to physically be near it to feel better yes. um and and really that helps a person to re rejuvenate recreate themselves in a way that's healthier for them for their time for now and for the future yes. so there's so many different things you can do uh yeah so anyone i love it i'm going to tell you one that i did this morning it. It's so wonderful. I was walking my dog right yeah. this morning and I saw a snail. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> An actual snail out of the shed, you know, it, it was carrying its house on its back and moving. And I said, uh -oh. right then, I was so mindful and I was very proud of myself because I was going, I was walking my dog not to hurry up and get it done, but to enjoy the experience exactly. and to be fully present. And with How that, I was able to look down and see the snail. Had I been hurried, have I been rushing? Had I been trying to hurry up and get the the task done and or distracted and not fully present, I would have missed the opportunity to see the beautiful creation so that was the snail. Such a beautiful message in that, isn't it? Because if you are just going all like guns blazing, a speedy Gonzalez, yes. uh, you're going to miss the beautiful things. You're going to miss some beautiful things oh. that are in your life. You're not going to be able to yes. see them because you're just so uh, like fast in what you're doing. You don't need right. speed doesn't mean um, the best outcome. If you take things slowly uh, and you, you absorb, you understand and you do yes. things from your truth, authentic self, that will be the, what the, the right outcome for you you so that's right really really powerful so thank yes. you so much chris we've actually come to the end of our um questions i've learned so Wonderful. much from you i've really enjoyed this session i love your energy i love your passion <laughs> and i love your glasses <laughs> <laughs> i know here i'll put them back on for you there we go <laughs> <They're> so cool <laughs> um so yeah, yeah. Where, where can people find you if they if they want to work with you chris Absolutely. If they are looking on IG, which is hugely popular right now, I am Realigned by Design on IG. I am on LinkedIn as Chris Lassiter. I am on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, which is called Maxed Out Self Strategies for Overwhelmed Sisters. That's so you can find me any of those places we're talking about how to avoid burnout, how to increase mindfulness, how to increase self-awareness. And if all else fails, you can find me on Linktree at Realign by Design. Beautiful. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely be connecting with you on some of the things I'm not Please. working on. And uh, I'm, I'm obviously Nari Kaur and you see me, but my, my, um, my business is Sky High Coaching. So that's Sky High Empowerment. Mm -hmm. Sky High Leadership on Instagram, Nari Core website currently under design, but it will be ready soon. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously f uh, Facebook, Sky High Empowerment and Leadership Coaching. So find me, I think on Instagram, send me a DM. I'm more than happy to help people on any of the topics that we discussed today. Uh, Chris, thank you so much again. And uh, I hope to, I look forward to speaking to you very soon about those naps. <laughs> Absolutely, Nari. Thank you so much. It's been an honor and a privilege. Thank you so much. Okay. Take care and bye everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>